In January of 2008, the nation of Norway was thrown into a frenzy when Oslo police released a missing persons bulletin looking for a 13-year-old boy named Adam. Adam had joined the Marian Lee School in September, only a few months before his disappearance, after emigrating from the Czech Republic with his father, Martin Fauner. He was attending the school through permission from his parents and was described by his peers as being rather odd. After his disappearance in mid-December of 2007, Norwegian authorities released images and information about Adam in an attempt to find him. Tips from Norwegian residents led authorities to the Arctic city of Tromsø, which has a population of about 71,000. Once in the city of Tromsø, Norwegian police were able to find and locate the missing boy, Adam. However, after locating him, they discovered that Adam wasn't actually a teenage boy at all. In fact, he was a 33-year-old woman by the name of Barbara Skurlova, who had been on the run for almost a year. After being extradited back to the Czech Republic, authorities continued to question Barbara Skurlova as to why she was masquerading as a teenage boy in another country and how she was able to pull it off. When the initial investigation began, Investigators discovered that Barbara was trying to escape from having to testify in a 2007 child abuse case that she had been directly involved with. Barbara was able to pass herself off as Adam due to a glandular disease that made her appear much younger than she actually was. In order to look as much like a teenage boy as she could, Barbara shaved her head and bound her breasts so that her chest appeared to be flat. She was able to get into Norway without being detected by using the passport of the real Adam, which had been supplied to her by the boy's parents. The boy's parents didn't just provide the passport, they also went to great lengths to deceive authorities into believing that Barbara was the real Adam. Adam's father, Martin Fauner, moved with Barbara to Norway in order to make it seem more believable. Once they were successful, Barbara escaped to Oslo with Martin so that she could live in hiding as his young boy. Although students and faculty described who they thought to be Adam as an odd child who kept to himself, no one considered that Adam wasn't who he said he was. Marion Lee's school's principal even said, We did react to Adam's behavior, but it's not easy to know. Children at that age are so different. What investigators soon realized was that this incident wasn't the first time that Barbara had pretended to be a young child. In fact, the child abuse case that she was running from involved Barbara pretending to be the adoptive daughter of Clara Morova. In May of 2007, a couple in Brno, Czech Republic prepared their home for their new baby. The crib was assembled and the changing table ready to go. The last thing they put together was a baby monitor, planning to have it supervise their newborn in its crib. Once the baby monitor had been put together, they turned it on and tried to connect it to their camera. Instead of simply connecting to their camera, their monitor connected to a camera nearby. To their horror, the new parents realized that the image on the screen was of their neighbor's house. And after looking harder at the image on the screen, they noticed two young boys tied up and naked in a dark room. When police stormed the residence of sisters Katerina and Clara Morova, they were horrified to find Clara's young boys restrained in their basement. Andre, who was eight years old at the time, was beaten and had been forced to eat his own vomit. Jakob, two years older than his brother, experienced the same treatment, including being submerged in water and having cigarettes put out on his body. The sisters were immediately arrested and the two boys were taken to the hospital to receive special care and psychiatric treatment. When searching the house, authorities found another young girl named Anishka, who was also brought into the hospital and given special care. Initially, police thought that Anishka was a victim of the two sisters, having been adopted by Clara not too long before. Anishka was taken to the children's home, but after a few months, she disappeared without a trace. It wasn't until the disappearance of Adam that the investigators put the pieces together and realized that Barbora had been pretending to be Anishka as well. But why was Barbora pretending to be a child, not once, but twice? And if she was the victim, 
why would she try to flee from authorities on two separate occasions? Investigators continue to look into the strange situation of Barbora Skrilova and the abuse case of Andre and Jakob, only to find a much more sinister truth. Clara Morova was the mother of both boys, Andre and Jakob. After a bitter divorce, mostly due to the bizarre behavior of Andre and Jakob's father, Clara moved in with her sister, Katerina, and brought her two sons with her. Neighbors of the two sisters described Clara as a loving mother, as she had been seen playing with her two boys in the yard. No one thought that she would participate in the child abuse that was described. However, Clara had often told people that she was destined to fulfill a mission for God, and her sister Katerina told people that she also had a mission too. This mission for God led both sisters to join a sect of a cult called the Grail Movement. The Grail Movement brought in a mixture of Christian ideologies as well as New Age views. It was founded in the 1940s by a self-proclaimed messiah called Oscar Ernst Bernhardt. The cult's sacred text was written by Oscar, entitled The Light of Truth, The Grail Movement. Oscar was able to gain supporters from across Germany and Austria and build a compound where he and his supporters could live. In 1938, Oscar's The Light of Truth was seized by the Nazi party after Austria came under German occupation. He was imprisoned for six months in Innsbruck before being exiled to the Saxony mountains. After the fall of the Nazi party, Oscar continued to work on the Light of Truth and continue his cult, which soon grew to several thousand members across many countries. By 2007, the cult had branched off and Joseph Skirlovum had become the leader of the new sect that Clara and Katerina joined. It was initially Katerina who had told Clara about Anishka and introduced her to Anishka's doctor and leader of the cult, Joseph. Clara and Katerina were looking for religious purpose and agreed to adopt Anishka, who they knew was actually Barbara the whole time. Barbara was actually the daughter of the cult leader Joseph and currently in the process of being groomed to take over in a leadership role within the cult. As part of their initiation into the cult, Joseph convinced Clara to let Barbara live in their house and pretend that Barbara was her adopted daughter. While living at the house, Barbara would help to brainwash Clara's two sons into the cult through torture and neglect. Barbara was not in fact a victim in this case and participated in the abuse of Andre and Jakob as much as Clara and her sister did. It was also uncovered that Adam's parents were a part of the cult and were trying to help Barbara escape under the orders of her father, Joseph. When the three women were finally interrogated, they all turned on each other and played victim. Barbora claimed that she had been brainwashed by her father into the cult and that she believed that was what she was meant to do, initially not admitting to the abuse she put the boys through. Clara also claimed to have been brainwashed by Barbora's father and said that he would send her text messages with instructions on how she should torture her sons. Claire testified and said that she never wanted to kill her sons, but wanted them to blindly follow their cult. She went on record saying, Yes, I know now I hurt my children, but I never intended to. Horrible things were happening then, and I don't understand how I could have let all that happen. Not much was released about what Katerina said, but it's assumed she also tried to incriminate her sister and Barbora. When the claims about Barbora's father's text messages were investigated, the number traced back to Katerina's, revealing that she had been the one sending the abusive text messages. The three women were in fact not even a part of the initial Grail message cult and had broken off to form their own cult between the three of them. After trial, all were found guilty. Clara was sentenced to nine years in prison, Katerina was sentenced to ten years in prison, most likely for her role in convincing Clara to do what she had did to her sons, and Barbora got five years in prison. All three have since been paroled and today are free. This bizarre case of false identity has inspired popular media into recreating the case in movies or TV, the most popular recreation being the movie Orphan. 
a story of a normal everyday family that decides to adopt a nine-year-old girl from Russia. Although they were more than ready to welcome her into their home, Esther wreaks chaos on the family all while hiding a dark secret. If you're into horror movies and would like to check it out, we highly recommend it. A prequel movie is slated to release within the next year. If you like this video, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel, as well as hitting the notification bell. We hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.